great stuff from Theo Rossi. Up next, Erwin Simon. Erwin, how are you? I'm good. Erwin Simon is the founder, CEO, and president of Haines Celestial, one of the largest food and beverage companies in the world. Can I say that? Fair enough. All right. The so lar The largest. The largest. How about that? So, you know, it's really interesting to have you on because, you know, Haines Celestial for a long time was about selling dry teas and a few beverages. You know, and you're here at BevNet Live and you're seeing a lot of uh, innovation. You're seeing a lot of excitement on the entrepreneurial end. What excites you? What excites Hain as it relates to the beverage industry at this point? So just come back, you know, as I said, starting this company in 1993, you know, with a focus on health and wellness, with a focus on natural, GMO, organic. So Hain, you know, has been a disruptor. Hain has been out there from the beginning. Um, in 2000, um, when we bought Celestial Seasoning Tea, been a great brand, been around for a long time. Celestials had ready-to-drink teas. Celestials had multiple, you know, other products in the beverage category. We've also been in the beverage category for a long time with our Rice Dream, our West Soy, our plant-based milk products. And then our big entry went into the category in 2014 when we bought Blueprint in cold-pressed juices. In Europe, we have a major plant-based beverage business. We also have in the UK a good size fresh juice business, which is fresh juice, smoothies, and that that we sell into Sansbury Tesco, Pret de Manger. So, you know, Hain today has a very, you know, big fresh beverage business around the world. So, you recently announced the launch of uh, Cultivate Ventures, which is your venture capital incubation unit that's uh, intended to invest in small brands, help them incubate, and then. Uh, plug them into your system. What are some of the categories that you're specifically interested in as it relates to RTD beverage? So the reason we went with Cultivate, listen, we see so many opportunities and deals out there and in the five to $10 million range. And as Hain gets to three plus billion dollars, some of these were too small to fit within Hain or got lost. We also have multiple brands that are great brands that got lost within Hain. So we've carved out about $60 million of sales and with its own separate group and its own separate sales and marketing organization. And along with that, we're gonna go out and look for acquisitions in the five to 15 to $20 million range. And you know, walking around here today, seeing some great beverages, some great ideas, you know, we'd love to own them. And the unique thing with this in Hain, we have tremendous sourcing opportunities. We have 39 of our own plants around the world. And we sell in over 75 countries, so how do we take some of these brands global and take them from $5 million? And you know, the original blueprint when I started Hain was taking some of these small companies like Earth's Best. When we bought Earth's Best, it was a $14 million business. Our baby business today is well over $200 million in sales. Oh. Terra Chips, Garden of Eden, Sensible Portions. So we've done that with brands now we're looking at how we do it with five to 10 million or $15 million brands, because Hain has the infrastructure, the procurement and manufacturing, and the money to invest in it. We don't have to go out and look for private equity dollars. We don't have to go out there you know, and raise venture capital. And uh, can you give us a little update on, uh, on what's going on with Blueprint? There's been a lot of innovation coming out of there lately. Listen, um, it's interesting when we bought Blueprint, my wife came to me early on and said, this is a company we need to, you know, you should buy. It's a great product. And, you know, what has evolved was Blueprint originally was a cleanse. And again, when you, you know, the big thing is when you do an acquisition, how do you bring it into the bigger company? How do you make sure you don't lose the entrepreneurship, the innovation? And I think when we first bought Blueprint, it was a change for us in what the original Blueprint started out to be. You know, Blueprint has changed dramatically today under Alex Galinda's leadership, you know, coming from Facebook, who had a beverage background, and that was a key, finding, you know, that right person to run it, because, you know, after the founders had left, we brought somebody in from Pepsi and didn't go so well. Anyway, um, Alex is, with her team, is out there looking at tremendous innovation, you know, we stuck to what the, the brand stands for and organic and raw. And that's why we're coming up with kombucha. Some of the things you were talking about before with vinegars, some of the things we're looking at at hot teas, 
cold press teas, and just stay tuned. Where we really have moved away from is no longer as a cleanse. So it's, you know, it's a ready to drink. That's pretty exciting. And I think the big thing is this here, where's the focus on affordable price points today? And that's a big thing today with, you know, where Blueprint is. Because when we originally bought Blueprint, the average price out there was ten ninety nine to twelve ninety nine. You know, we're down to a three ninety nine price point today. And you know, Blueprint is, you know, approaching a fifty million dollar brand. It's not some small little brand. Nice. Yeah, I mean the interesting thing about Blueprint is it had to evolve, as you said, to a new sort of reality for cold pressed juice. There's no more ten dollar juices, it's three ninety nine dollar juices that are being sold at Target. In fact, Blueprint is being sold at Target in Boston, the Boston area. I mean, how do you see the juice category as evolving over the next three to four years? So, you know, listen, one of the reasons coming here today, you know, the beverage category is a gigantic category. And, you know, we also have a big business in the snack category. You know, we also have a big business in the baby business. So it's not that, you know, share is growing. What happened is this here. First of all, millennials are a big part of Hain today. Secondly is, as we've talked about before, the whole beverage category is evolving and changing as soda declines, as sugar drinks decline. What are they replacing with? So, you know, Blueprint is going after the Unwalla, the Naked Juice, the Tropicana, you know, consumer that's looking for healthier drinks, less sugar, that when you drink it, you know, there's value and there's attributes to it. And, you know, we have Celestial Seasons Kombucha. We have our own kombucha plant. I'm not sure the Celestial Season Kombucha resonates with millennials today where Blueprint Kombucha does. We have a major soup business today in Imagine Soup, Health Valley Soup, and a soup business in the UK. But Blueprint is coming out with a cold press soup that resonates with millennials. So there's a lot within Hain today, a lot of technology innovation today, where when I originally looked at buying Blueprint, it was how does that become our lifestyle brand? So stay tuned for Blueprint possibly going into personal care, going into other types of products, other types of beverage products. And I, you know, think, you know, I have four kids, we have 55 brands, you know, Blueprint is one of my favorite out there. I mean, that's pretty amazing that you're sort of leveraging the equity and the brand name across a whole spectrum of products. I mean, is that something you look for when you're looking for acquisitions at this point? So just come back, Earth's Best. Earth's Best, you know, was a baby food business we bought. We introduced infants and toddlers to their first foods. Babies only stay on baby food for about nine months. We've gone into diapers that are chlorine free. We've gone into formula. We've gone into wipes. We've gone into food. So our dream business, we had a non-dairy plant-based dream. We've gone into non-dairy ice cream. We've gone into non-dairy yogurt. We've gone into non-dairy chocolate. I love taking a brand and expanding it across categories. You got to keep the common denominator there. You just can't, you know, put it on everything. But I think, from a lifestyle standpoint, Blueprint has tremendous opportunities and application for other products in the category. Now we have about one minute left, but I'd be remiss if I didn't ask you about one very fast-growing category, which is RTD Coffee. So. You know, we have not got into the coffee business. We originally tried it with Celestial Seasonings early on, and it's just been a category that I just felt there's so many different great companies out there with Starbucks and what Green Mountain was doing um, that we just couldn't add value to. And that's the thing within Hain. If we can't add value, we can't innovate. And we've stayed away from pet business. We've stayed away from businesses that we just thought, hey, not our bailiwick. We have so much opportunity in the tea business. Millennials drink more t hot tea than they do coffee, and that's where our focus is right now, how we grow the Celestial brand, how we grow the Blueprint brand. Extremely informative stuff. Uh, Erwin, I can't thank you enough for being as open and uh, as candid with us. This has been tremendous. Thanks so much for being here. You know, just like consumers look for transparency on products and ingredients today, I make sure we give the same thing. Outstanding. Thank really you. appreciate your time. Thanks Thank so much. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you.